And now the question is, at least here in Houston, how far away are the Texans from getting to that game? I mean, the Texans got to get to an AFC Championship game first. They've never been there in the history of their franchise. But let's be real. A couple of years ago, the Cincinnati Bengals were the worst team in the NFL. Two wins. Last year, they won four games. The Texans won four games this year. So what's the path for the Houston Texans to one day get to a Super Bowl and maybe do something the Bengals have yet to do, win a Super Bowl? So not only do they have to figure out the quarterback spot. Look, they're going to give Davis Mills this opportunity in 2022. And if it didn't work out for Davis Mills, I mean, we're going to know if the Texans feel like Davis Mills is the guy or not by the end of 2022. And then their actions in that following offseason will tell us, okay, what's the deal? Are they going to go chase one of these young quarterbacks in the draft? Are they going to go maybe try to upgrade some other way, some other quarterback via trade or free agency, something like that? Like, we'll know. We'll know. But you know what I'm thinking about, too? I mean, we could talk about a ton of stuff with the Texans, but I have no idea. I cannot confidently say today that Lovey Smith is the type of head coach that can get you to the Super Bowl, mm. even if your quarterback plays really well, even if you have – some guys turn into really nice players over the next couple of years. Even if you hit on a bunch of these draft picks that Nick Casario has coming up, I do not know. I cannot confidently say that Lovey Smith is a Super Bowl level coach. And the counterpoint to that would be, well, he got to a Super Bowl with Rex Grossman as mm-hmm. his quarterback. The counterpoint to that counterpoint would be, well, that was a long time ago, number one, wow. and the Bears had a much more talented overall roster than the Texans do, number two. And, look, Lovey Smith was in Chicago for a long time. I don't think he's going to be in Houston for nine years, even if things go well. I just don't think it's his plan or the organization's plan for him to stick around here for around a decade. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Lovey Smith is a Super Bowl-caliber coach right now, and I don't know. Like, it doesn't feel like the light is at the end of the tunnel right now for the Houston Texans. I don't know if it's going to be there while Lovey Smith is still in charge. Like, this team might be... A quarterback away, they might be a head coach away, they might be a lot of things away from actually getting close to playing in that game. I feel like the earliest it could be would be three years. And and that's kind of because you look at this team right now, is Davis Mills your long-term answer at quarterback? I don't think he is. I, I think maybe he could be okay, but I don't think he's the quarterback if this team wins a Super Bowl. So if that's the case, let's say they draft someone next year and they follow the, the Cincinnati blueprint. Well, then it would be year two of that quarterback when they'd make the jump to the Super Bowl, so that'd be three seasons from now. So I feel like the earliest would be three seasons from now, and that's if they hit on all these picks, they have a great team, and then who knows who the coach is at that point. Is it Lovey Smith? I tend to agree with Cody. I don't think it's going to be Lovey Smith when this team eventually gets to a Super Bowl at some point in its franchise's history, but the earliest I see it would be three seasons from now because I just don't see the path unless they somehow, some way make a move that no one sees coming. Or Davis Mills is somehow so much better than any of us are led to believe he's mm-hmm. eventually going to be. Look, there are ways to do this relatively quickly. Uh, Cincinnati's a prime example. I know they didn't win, but uh, they had a lead in the final two minutes of a Super Bowl just two years after being the worst team in the NFL. So there are ways, if you make a couple of right decisions, and there's an mm-hmm. S, and there are a lot of decisions that you have to get right to be like Cincinnati, but there's a way that you can do it in this league. The tough part about thinking you could be the Bengals is you look at this Bengals roster, you look up and down at where they got some of these guys, where some of these guys came from that were key aspects of their team. And I'm not talking necessarily about the superstars. I'm just talking about guys that made key plays over the course of a season, over the course of a playoff run. Tyler Boyd's a second round pick. Joe Mixon's a second round pick. Sam Hubbard's a third round pick. Jesse Bates is a second round pick. And all these guys were Chief drafted. Hayes, second round pick. All these, the, the guys that I'm talking about right here were drafted in 2016, 2017, 2018. We're talking about the Texans not even having guys off of some of those draft classes still on the roster. Like the Texans are working from a net negative on their overall talent level, not to mention the success that Cincinnati's had in recent years, like Jake's talking about with T. Higgins. Like, you're really working not even with an advantage post-Deshaun Watson trade from a capital infusion, a capital uh, in, you know talent infusion with this team, because you're working from a net negative from the past few seasons when Bill O'Brien was missing on draft picks, when, heck, even the, the final little bit of Rick Smith has missed on draft picks. Like, you're working from a net negative that you then have to get even again because you had these trades that did not net you big-time players and did not play off from the value that you sent out and the value that you brought back in. 
So you're 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 a lot further away, even in their best case scenario, than two or three years. I mean, un- unless Davis Mills is just covering up a ton. I mean, think about what Cincinnati has. Not even the Rams. Situ- like you can't even pretend that you're close to the Rams situation. You like, tried that, like and you mi- you missed on you, all the trades. You can't even <laughs> pretend like that. They've got the best player on defense in the National Football League over on the site. You had that a couple years ago when J.J. was here. It didn't work. You didn't get there. It didn't happen for you. So you can't even pretend you're the Rams situation. So even in Cincinnati, like, I mean, they nailed it at quarterback, but they've nailed it in so many other different positions, and then they they were able, with the way that they spent money in a very wise way over the past two seasons to supplement those things, you're just so far away because they've had so many things go right when you've had these things be going wrong for you. Right, absolutely. And I don't know how many people trust the guys in charge to get things right. There's a lot of cleanup here. Now, the Bengals aren't a one-off. I feel like a lot of people have said, oh, you can't be Cincinnati because that never happens. It, it, that's never happened before. It's happened before in the NFL where a team has gone from super dysfunctional, looking like they've got no chance to be relevant in any time in the not-too-distant future to winning a Super Bowl in relatively short order. It happened less than five years ago with the Eagles, man. I mean, Chip Kelly was Bill O'Brien before Bill O'Brien was Bill O'Brien. Atrocious. The moves that that guy made, I mean, he ran the Eagles franchise. We thought he was running that Eagles franchise into the ground. He traded all of their best players. He was going YOLO mode when it came to draft picks. He seemingly ruined that franchise, and people are like, dude, it's going to take the Eagles 5, 10, 15 years to get out of this hole that Chip Kelly just dug. Two years later, they win the freaking Super Bowl. All right? Like, it can be done. The Rams in 1999, the first time. They won a Super Bowl. Man, they had four wins the year before. They lost Trent Green to an injury. Everybody's like, dude, they're not even close. It's going to take them a long time to get there. Kurt Warner comes in. All of a sudden, they win the Super Bowl the very next season. So it's not easy, right? Like, there are not very many examples of this happening over the course of NFL history. But it's not like a one-off. It's not like it can't be done. So, yeah, the Texans feel like they're a long way away. And obviously, the roster that they have right now is nowhere close to competing for a Super Bowl. But, man, if they make a few right decisions... It doesn't have to be that far away to where this team is playing in relevant football games. Hey, who was the coach for that Eagles team? Doug Peterson. Could, it, where's he? Oh, could, could the Texans have hired him? They probably could have hired oh, him. They man. could have at least interviewed man, he was he, he didn't have a team for this year, did he, huh? He did not. Oh, man. That's a shame. Coach and quarterback. If you don't have that, you don't have a chance. You don't see a bad coach win a Super Bowl. Who's the bigger question mark? Lovey or Davis Mills? Mm. I think it's Lovey. This, this this ain't the mid two thousands anymore, man. I would say it's Lovey too. Only and I don't dislike the Lovey hire, but I think the only reason why I don't dislike it as much as I probably would under normal circumstances is I was on the they're gonna hire McCown and they didn't. So I'm still on the sense of relief from that. But it's gotta be Lovey. I mean Lovey was good with the Bears. His last winning season in Chicago though was in two thousand twelve. That's ten years ago. Heck, neither one of them may last past two years, so And that's <laughs> the thing. Ask yourself this question. Is third round pick Davis Mills really going to be a top ten quarterback in the NFL? Because if the answer is no, then it's gonna be very difficult to win a Super Bowl. No doubt. And that's just kind of how it goes.